you may recall from the last video that we used this little formula to um, estimate the population size. Um, in the simple situation where we tagged uh, a bunch of uh, bunnies <laughs> in that case, um, and then we came back a couple days later and uh, randomly recaptured a bunch of bunnies and the proportion of um, marked bunnies to unmarked bunnies or total bunnies <laughs> captured in that um, uh, second uh, capture event allowed us to get a, a population estimate uh, And from that, we were able to um, establish that there's a 95% chance that the number of bunnies uh, ran between 54 and 122 with the, um, the mean value of the, the population estimate uh, being 88. And again, as I said before, <clears throat> that works as long as you don't <laughs> violate uh, some assumptions. And these are, these are pretty big assumptions. So, uh, for that simple situation, the one from Smith to work, um, you can't have any deaths, you can't have any births, and you know in any population of animals or um, living things, you're going to have stuff die, and you're going to have stuff uh, come into the population through birth. You're also going to have um, changes in the population due to um, individuals uh, leaving and uh, coming in from uh, other places. Now, a couple of years ago, I was uh, working with a colleague of mine, John Zimmerman. Um, John, by the way, has been really good the last few years about coming out and participating in the uh, Muscle Roundup along with uh, his granddaughter, Allison. And so John uh, understands what, what I'm up to, and he also has a lot of experience um, as a, uh, a wildlife ecologist. Uh, John worked with um, armadillos. Uh, he worked with bears. He's done a lot of different things over the years. And um, so he had uh, a tool in his back pocket that he was able to suggest to me that might be useful in analyzing this um, mark and recapture data that I was getting from muscles. And from a, from a mathematical perspective, it doesn't really matter uh, whether a, a person is tagging and releasing and then recapturing bears or armadillos or fish or um, freshwater mussels or what have you, um, they're all pretty much the same. So John even um, went so far as to uh, allow uh, his students in his ecology lab at the time to um, take a session and attempt to analyze the mussel data that I'd collected up to that point. And John provided me with uh, copies of his materials that he uh, uh, used that day with his uh, ecology students, so I'd have something to, to start with. And the analytical method that John um, suggested to me is this one that's sort of commonly called um, the Jolly Sieber method, after the, uh, the names of the two scientists back in the uh, 1960s um, that developed it. Uh, now, I found uh, copies of the original papers written by these two authors, uh, and uh, it turns out that uh, they're both UK uh, scientists. Um, this uh, Jolly was a um, uh, connected with uh, uh, the Agricultural Research uh, Council unit of statistics in Aberdeen, Scotland, and uh, Sieber. Uh, was with the Department of Statistics, uh, the London School of Economics. Cool thing about um, this method is that it uh, actually allows for uh, death and birth and immigration and immigration. And um, <clears throat> another characteristic that's uh, uh, not accounted for in Smith is what happens when you tag on more than one occasion? which you know we've done uh, over the years here at Crooked Lake uh, and then we've come back and recaptured at different um, uh, intervals and dates over the years so this really is much more robust and uh, is better suited to analyze the sort of data that we've been collecting now I like math <laughs> I, I like statistics um, 
back when I knew it, <laughs> I, I liked calculus. Uh, but I'm certainly no mathematician. I'm, I'm a biologist that can add, subtract, multiply, and divide, and a, a couple other little things if I have help from a calculator. Uh, so I, I really needed a little bit of help, and John's documents were helpful. Um, and also an, another um, uh, explanation that I found uh, to be quite useful was by this um, author, Ogle, uh, and it's actually an online document. It wasn't published in a peer-reviewed journal, uh, but still in all, it's uh, really quite useful in that it, it walks uh, a person through step-by-step -step the Jolly Cerber method, and it also gives a very nice example and, and some, um, some illustrations that were uh, a nice bridge for me between the really dense, arcane mathematical um, language in uh, the original papers and um, what what I um, developed into a method that I could um, uh, actually pull off. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, and I'm, uh, I'm going to share that with you here uh, in a minute. Holy smokes. <laughs> I, I thought you said this was simple, Warren. Well, uh, this is one of the illustrations from um, Ogle. And it, it is, once you kind of stare at it for a while, it is really helpful, uh, particularly when you read along uh, with the, the explanation. <clears throat> but I've taken this and uh, give it, given it a bit uh, less in the way of, um, of uh, mathematical notation and a little more uh, in terms of words uh, to, uh, to guide both me and anybody that I try to explain this to. So first understand, please, this is a, uh, my interpretation, my modification of the charts uh, that I just showed you from Ogle. And it's based on uh, Ogle, on John Zimmerman's document, um, and also, of course, the original work by Jolly and Siever. So this is a, a derivative of all of that, um, mainly intended for me to use uh, so that I don't get too confused uh, when, I, when I try to do this. So I'm just going to grind through this um, little flow chart with you, and hopefully that'll give you a taste for uh, how this is uh, carried out. All right, so let's, let's look at the, the big words first. We'll, we'll pick the low-hanging fruit. Um, by roundup, of course, I mean um, an event where uh, we come out to the muscle bed, we search, we do our best to find uh, as many muscles as we can, and um, often that's one day period. Uh, sometimes, depending upon all kinds of factors like weather and number of people available and, and blah, 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 um, the, the event might actually uh, have taken place over a, a series of days. Uh, but that's, that's what I mean by a, a roundup. I means which roundup. So beginning uh, on the 2nd of October 2015, uh, that would have been, that was roundup number one. Um, the next uh, roundup was in the summertime, the, the 20th of June, 2017, or 2017, yeah, uh, through um, the 22nd of June. So that roundup actually was three days long, but that's roundup number two. Uh, the last one we did before I recorded this video uh, was um, 24th of September, 2022. Uh, and that was our 15th roundup. So we have 15 um, different roundups to um, to look at. And so we're gonna we're gonna just focus on one of those uh, roundups here uh, as an example. Okay. So for any particular roundup, um, these boxes uh, are gonna help illustrate conceptually um, what's going on. So <clears throat> N sub I um, is the population before the roundup took place. So you might think of like the, the day before um, we uh, went out there and started um, putting flags in the sediment and, and uh, pulling mussels out and 
measuring and so forth. So what was the population before the roundup? And we don't know that. That's the thing we're trying to find out. Uh, and we, we never will know it precisely. We're going to try to find an estimate for um, the population. Um, M, capital M sub I, is the number of muscles that were out there in the, the muscle bed that were marked. Uh, and again, that's something we're never going to know that precisely. But this method is going to give an estimate of what that number um, would have been. So these are things, this <clears throat> capital N and capital M are things that we wish we knew, but we don't know. Now this arrow here represents the number of muscles that we <clears throat> captured that day. Total number. And this, by the way, is for one particular species. So when I'm talking about muscles here, I'm really talking about Lampsilis siliquidia uh, because that's the species that we've done most of the tagging on and the one that we're really interested in as far as population estimates go. Okay, so <clears throat> little n sub i is the number of um, muscles that were captured, whether they were marked or not. And fortunately, that's a number that we can know because we can count. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Another number that we can know with certainty is the number of um, tagged muscles that were recaptured. So that's little m sub i. So we um, we tagged them before. We know we've seen them before because they have little tags on them, and we count them up. And the total number of that is um, that uh, m sub i. These other m's uh, are I've provided here some space for a bunch of other little m's. These little m's. Um, are a subset of the total number of recaptures. So what I what we have to do is look at each mus muscle and decide um, when did we see that last? During which roundup uh, was that last seen? Not when it was first tagged, but when it was last seen. And I'll give you an example uh, in a little while to show you uh, exactly how how I determine that. This little u here uh, is based upon um, a couple of numbers that we've already um, found out. So basically, little u is uh, all of the uh, muscles that were captured minus um, the, 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 the ones that were tagged. And what that's going to give us is the number of muscles that were captured that didn't have tags on them. Big R is um, the number of muscles that we release back into the habitat that have tags on them. And that's going to include all of those um, that were you know, we, we found uh, that already had tags, so those that were previously marked, plus any uh, that we that didn't have tags when we found them, but we added tags to them. So those two numbers together, um, minus any accidental deaths, uh, which I can we've never had a muscle that has died in our hands. <laughs> uh, the only one I can remember that perished during a muscle roundup uh, was one that a student brought to me. I think it was a Paganodon grandis. In fact, I'm sure it was. Um, that they'd accidentally stepped on and crushed uh, the shell. That uh, And that individual had not been tagged. Uh, and uh, it was not uh, our target species. So. Um, this accidental death business is important with things like, oh, I don't know if you're tagging um, 
trout or bass or something, um, you, you might actually have a, uh, an individual who dies uh, between the time uh, when it was captured and um, when it was uh, about to be released. So it, you know, it, it, basically it's a tagged individual that died during processing. And that's one that's uh, uh, zero here in, in, our, uh, in our data set. And this this whole lot of nothing here is uh, the uh, the mussels uh, in our population that have um, uh, weren't tagged during the the mussel roundup, plus the ones that um, we've processed, found, put back. So this is whatever's left after we're done with our um, our day's work or our, our several days' work in the case of a, a multi-day uh, mussel roundup. Um, and then that population is going to, uh, uh, over the, the period of time, you know, months in our case, uh, there's presumably going to be some new individuals added to that population uh, through birth and through uh, those coming in from other places. Um, and then subtracted from that are going to be um, those that perish uh, during those intervening months and uh, any that decide to pull up stakes and, and go elsewhere. And what we're going to be left with is uh, the, the next month's or the next uh, roundup's population. So by way of example, um, let's go back to uh, the, the summer of 2019, <clears throat> and that was uh, muscle or yeah muscle roundup number seven. Uh, when we back in the days before we started using the pontoon the pontoon boat as our um, base of operations, uh, we, we set up our um, our sort of mobile lab here uh, on the the bank of, of the lake. So beautiful view here uh, of Crooked Lake. Uh, from the shore uh, and <clears throat> individuals you know that helped me out um, would uh, wade through the muscle bed uh, grab um, uh, six at a time you know put them in a cooler walk all the way down the boardwalk to the lab uh, and then we do the processing down there that was a uh, kind of a slow, cumbersome process that we, you know, found more recently um, is really expedited by uh, using a, a boat as our um, base of operations right there where we're doing the work. And on that um, glorious uh, 22nd of June, uh, we we captured a total of 76 uh, Lampsilis siliquidia. Uh, 25 of those uh, individuals had tags on them uh, and therefore 51 uh, did not have tags. And when we finished for the day, uh, we released 76 muscles back into the, the wild uh, and that matches the number that we captured. So again, we had none that died in our hands. Uh, and of, of the 76 that we released, um, 25, yep, previously tagged, but we also had 43 that um, we tagged that day for the first time and let them go. So only eight were um, released without tags on them. So let's focus here on our, uh, our, our previously tagged individuals, those, those 24, 25 that were um, found with tags on them. Of those 25 that were previously tagged, uh, one of them uh, had the ID number 12149. When I look back in my records, 12149 has been, uh, was originally tagged on uh, the 22nd of June. 2017. It was also seen in September of that year, October of 2018, June of 2019, and, and so forth. So 
so please understand you know these this record that I'm showing you um, was <clears throat> is the records as of today that I'm recording this uh, and and we're we're concerned about looking back at what was the situation on the 22nd of June 2019 so at that time you know, these dates were in the future we didn't know about these here's the date that we we're out there stomping around uh, during that seventh roundup so that's the the 22nd of June 2019 and the question at hand is what roundup which roundup did we last see this uh, 12149 and that the answer to that is we saw that muscle uh, previously most recently uh, on the 5th of October 2018 so now we can build a little table uh, to summarize the results of this effort um, looking at all of the muscles that uh, were recaptured uh, on the 22nd of June uh, we just saw that one of them um, was last seen on the 5th of October <clears throat> there were seven others so there's a total of eight that were seen um, uh, during muscle roundup number six uh, and and so forth so there was there was one muscle seen uh, last time during muscle uh, roundup number one um, there were four that were seen last time during muscle roundup number two four that were seen during roundup three none were seen um, in roundup number four and eight uh, were last seen during muscle roundup number five so now we can go back and fill out um, my little flow chart um, again little n was 76 that's how many we uh, captured in total um, all the recaptures those that had tags on them uh, from previous roundups totaled to 25 and of those 25 one uh, was last seen during roundup number one that's what these little subscripts mean um, four were seen during roundup two four were seen during roundup three zero during four eight during five eight during six and to get our uh, u 76 minus 25 is last time I looked 51 our R big R was 25 that had previously been marked 43 that were newly marked during roundup number seven to total 68 I hear those numbers again laid out in a sort of tri triangular looking data matrix um, just like I showed them to you a minute ago where we had you know, here, here's muscle roundup number seven the one that we've been using as our example uh, and again one individual was seen last time during muscle roundup number one four individuals during roundup number two four during three zero had been seen during muscle roundup number four eight last seen muscle roundup number five eight during muscle roundup number six and that's as far as we can go because roundup number seven <laughs> well there it is there's, there's seven we can't go any further than that down our, our row and as we um, progress uh, to, uh, toward you know bigger numbers muscle roundup number 15 I had a whole lot of digging to do in order to get these numbers for um, our most our most recent roundup Now this triangular um, 
looking data matrix is sort of a milestone here in the Jolly Server method. Once we get to this point, um, it's pretty much um, straightforward as to how we go about uh, estimating population sizes and getting our uh, standard errors. <clears throat> and even though it's straightforward, there's a lot of steps involved and it's it's kind of tedious and cumbersome. Honestly, if I was to go through all of the steps with you, um, it, this video would turn out to be you know, another maybe two or three hours long. Uh, in fact, it's the kind of thing that is more suited to doing sort of a workshop or, or a lab um, with a bunch of students than um, putting it out here on a, on a uh, YouTube video. I mean, I know, I know this stuff is kind of boring anyway. Uh, this would get, this would go way down the rabbit hole. Uh, and, and I'm not going to do that at this point. So I'm just going to gloss over uh, the, the mathematics and skip right to the end uh, before I completely lose my audience. If you really, really want to know how to do this, uh, let me know. Send me an, an email and uh, we'll, we'll see what we can do uh, about doing some, uh, some more uh, detail. But <laughs> I'm going to move on for now, okay? Once all the, the math is done, uh, here's what we have left. This is our, our goal, uh, and that is the, uh, the, the population estimates for each of these muscle roundups together with um, a standard error value. And two things probably jump out at you right off the bat, and that's these blanks here at the top and the bottom. Uh, so one of the, the uh, things about the Jolly Cerber method is that you can't have a, a population estimate for the first time you go out. Uh, that first tagging event in the fall of 2015, um, no muscles uh, had been uh, tagged up to that point in a systematic way. So we didn't have any tag returns that day. All we had were just new tagging events. And so we don't have any idea what the population was uh, that day. That, that makes sense, right? Um, at least it does to me. Uh, the, the last one at the bottom of the list is the fall of uh, 2022, the one that we did most recently. There's no values for that one either. Uh, and, and that's due to the, the way the mathematics works with this um, method. You're always kind of like one muscle roundup behind. Uh, so we, we'll find that out uh, when we do our next roundup uh, in the summertime. But for now, we don't have any numbers to put in for the fall of 2022. So we're going to just focus on the middle portion. We'll, we'll pick the low-hanging fruit, the stuff that we, we do have estimates for. And now I went through this table and um, put in bold all of the um, muscle population estimates that we have for our summer roundups like that. And I also went through, as you can see, and uh, uh, color coded the, the fall roundups. So those are in red. Now, just kind of keep my mouth shut here and, and let you stare at those for a little bit. Uh, don't worry. I, I'm going to follow this up here in a second with a graph. There's a couple weirdos in here um, that I kind of don't know what to do with. Um, the winter of 2017, the only one that we did in the winter so far, um, right, right before Christmas, a couple days before Christmas, uh, we found very few um, uh, mussels that day. Uh, we did find a few uh, and, and enough to give us population estimate. Uh, and uh, standard error. The standard error was actually bigger than um, the, the population estimate. Uh, another one that I kind of don't know what to do <laughs> too much with was one that I did by myself uh, in the fall of 2021. Um, and I'm just throwing those in there just so uh, we, we have completeness. 
Okay, so let's move on and have a look at the next. Well, here's that graph I promised you. Uh, the little circles are uh, the, the population estimates, and then these um, error bars above and below on each one uh, are standard errors. And again, as with all uh, this YouTube business uh, that I'm throwing out there for you guys, you know, consider this this to be a preliminary um, analysis. Uh, I view this as being uh, something that I might do if we were in person, uh, if we were all in one place, um, us sitting down on a Friday afternoon and me throwing a, a slide up and saying, hey, look, look, this is preliminarily, this is what I, I'm seeing. Uh, you guys have, have any questions? You, you see something I don't? Uh, let me know. Um, but it, it certainly isn't intended to be final publishable um, uh, results at this point. This is a, uh, a work in progress. And part of why I say that is there's some quality control that needs to happen before I would ever dream of putting this out there in the, um, uh, the peer review process or, or anything like it, even at a, at a conference. Um, I, I, would, I need to go back through all my um, values and, and records uh, to, to verify that I haven't you know, slipped a decimal point or um, inverted some numbers or something that, that these are actually accurate. Um, but for now, anyway, uh, I, I think we can um, we can look at some trends and, and maybe pull a couple things out of this that uh, satisfy us as muscle geeks about our population of Lampsilis silicoidea at Crooked Lake. Uh, and one of those things uh, that jumps out to me is that. You know, the, in answer to the question of how many um, Lampsilis siliquidia live in the mussel bed at Crooked Lake, um, it, the answer seems to be, to me, in the hundreds. Uh, not in the tens of thousands, not in the thousands, uh, but south of a thousand. So we're, we're looking at population estimates here for the most part, um, oh, I don't know, between... Um, couple hundred and maybe four or five hundred. Um, 450 seems to be the, the highest um, mean value that, that we're looking at here. So that gives me some answer to the question of how many mussels live at Crooked Lake. Around, you know, three, four hundred, maybe a couple hundred, something like that. You know, another thing um, that a guy might draw from a graph like this is um, is the population increasing, decreasing, or staying the same. And if I had produced this video I don't know, back in uh, uh, toward the end of um, 2020, <clears throat> I might have said, "Well, you know, this is a weird one. <laughs> Lots of variation there, so let's not look at that too much." But if I'd looked at it back then, at the end of 2020, a couple of years ago, I might have been tempted to say, "Well, gee." Looks like the population is is increasing to me. Um, and if I was looking at it uh, today, just in isolation, without without knowing about the previous, you know, if I'd started back in 2020, uh, I might have said, "Oh, gee, the population is declining." Uh, and and maybe actually it, it has gone up and gone down like that. Maybe that's that's real. But given all this variation and all these scribbles that I've made on this graph. At the present time, I'm not ready to um, go either way. I mean, it, it could be going up, it could be going down, it could be staying roughly the same. Uh, I think you know, a combination of additional analysis and um, more data, you know, doing this for a number of years, uh, should give us a better picture of uh, any population fluctuations that are taking place. Well, once again, thank you for your attention and uh, your spending a little bit of time with me and our muscles here uh, at uh, Crooked Lake. I look forward to catching you again in the future. Uh, I don't really know what the next video uh, is going to be about. I've, I've got plenty of other things uh, to talk about. Uh, it's kind of just whatever um, and however the spirit moves me. All right, so take care. See you next time. Bye.